to our Reverend John this morning, who will be bringing us new perspectives to take us upward, forward, and onward on the path. Reverend John. Good morning, family. Let us say together, I love that affirmation that Carol shared with us in the, from the inspirational reading. I am a loving instrument of God's good. Together. I am a loving instrument of God's good. And to your neighbor, say, you are a loving instrument of God's good. You are a loving instrument of God's good. You are a loving instrument of God's good. And so to the world from the center, Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living, we say, regardless of your age, your gender, your sexual preference, your race, your physical appearance, or your geography, you are a loving instrument of God's good. Welcome to the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living in warm and beautiful Jamaica. And welcome to you all. Sis, it's lovely to have you home. You run left the call. I call Jackie Barra sis because she used to look after my mother Daisy's manicure and pedicure, and she treated her like a daughter. So if she was Dottie's, Daisy's daughter, she must be my sis. Friends, Jamaicans everywhere, here in Jamaica and across the world, are talking about the crime and the state of emergency declared in Montego Bay by the government last um, week. It's a topic of every talk show on the radio and television. It's a lead item on every newscast and the subject of advisories issued by embassies and high commissions to their nationals, either residing in Jamaica or planning to visit. Um, Thursday morning as my next door, I was in the garden and my next door neighbor's housekeeper was arriving and I said, morning Thelma, how are you? And you know what came out of her mouth? Everybody on the bus this morning I talk about the crime and the violence. <clears throat> that was her answer to how are you? <laughs> and I said, what a thing, eh? What a thing, eh, Reverend? When all we can talk about is crime and violence. And as she stepped past me, spirit said, it's time for a new conversation. Can we say that together? It's time for a new conversation. And so that's the title of my encouragement today. It's time for a new conversation. It's a new year, and we want a new conversation. You know how spirit, spirit really is amazing. That was Thursday morning. Thursday evening at our first Board of Trustees meeting for the year, at the end of the meeting, I went around the room to say to people, how did you feel? And I was saying to um, Andre Nemhard, who is our new, newest board member, how did you feel about the meeting? And out of her mouth came this amazing statement. I am looking forward to the new conversation. Wow. And so a new conversation is what I want to talk about this morning. And I think you will agree that the world in general, and Jamaica in particular, needs this new conversation. So right up front, let me give you your assignment for the coming week. In fact, coming weeks. Regulars at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living know that I always give an assignment. Some do it diligently. Some do it regularly. Some start and like New Year's resolutions fall off. But even if you have just the intention, I bless you and I celebrate you. And so your assignment, should you decide to undertake it, is to refuse to entertain any discussion about crime in Jamaica or overseas for that matter. Also, refrain from commenting on or reposting the negative utterances of foreign heads of state who shall remain nameless. <laughs> Instead, every day during your daily spiritual uh, practice, read Philippians 4, verse 8, which in the King James Version reads, and I quote, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, 
Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Yes? If, can I have an amen if you agree? Yes. You may want to write out that scripture in your journal and then write a sentence or two on the things that are worthy of praise in Jamaica and the world. Let us start that new conversation with ourselves right here and right now. So as part of my contemplation of the new conversation I wish to be part of this year, I have been reading again that well-organized piece of masterful writing by the beautiful Jesus, which is recorded in Matthew chapters 5 through 7, known as the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus, just as a matter of fact, uh, a matter of interest, did you know that some theologians believe that the master teacher actually had a carefully prepared uh, manuscript for this particular sermon, and that Matthew really quoted it verbatim. It is an interesting hypothesis since Matthew is indeed the only writer who's, who records this sermon in its unabridged form. There's, there's a shorter version in Luke. Um, I think it's Luke 6, verses 17 to 49. But it appears that this was copied from Matthew's version. But Matthew is the only person who has the full, the full talk. Very interesting for me. And now that uh, Sermon on the Mount begins with an eight line, I'd call it a prose poem. Reverend Michael can probably correct me since he's, he's the, the literature person. But it's introduced by this eight, eight verse prose poem that has been called, interestingly, the Beatitudes. And the Beatitudes are a summation in a nutshell of the religion of Jesus the Christ. It really sums up his teaching. If you read the Beatitudes, you've got all that Jesus had to, had to teach during his ministry. So it's a very instructive um, piece of instruction from the master teacher. And the master does not give a list of do's and don'ts as was the style of the old Mosaic law, which demanded conformity to certain external practices, such as keeping the Sabbath and observing the Passover. The Beatitudes speak not of conforming, but of transforming. Just as Paul did many years later when he said in Romans 12 verse 2, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And my friends, it is impossible to renew your mind if you are forever talking about the things you don't want to experience. It is impossible to be transformed in mind if every conversation you have is about what's wrong. What's wrong with your neighbor? What's wrong with your church? What's wrong with your community? What's wrong with the country? What's wrong in America? What's wrong? Hello. <laughs> Transformation has to come with a new self-talk. You know, we talk to ourselves a lot. Well, a lot of us walk around with this mantra, I am not good enough, or there is not enough for me, or boy with my luck, or no good man no day, or um, that we have all kinds of things that we tell ourselves on a regular basis. That's the inner conversation that we have with ourselves. And guess what happened? We are talking ourselves right down, down, down into what I, I see as a, a widespread, low-grade depression that spreads right across the nation. So can you see why it's important we change our thinking and start a new conversation that keeps our attention focused on what we want to experience and not on what we don't want? Each beatitude begins with the word blessed. And this is an important point because the word bless means to confer prosperity upon or to enrich. 
So when you bless something or someone, you confer prosperity upon them and you enrich them with your blessing. The word bless therefore makes a divine promise of what will happen to you if you condition your mind to the full acceptance of these attitudes of being. So can you imagine the impact on Jamaica and the world if our conversation centered on the seventh beatitude? And I want to just spend a little time on that seventh today. <coughs> Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of of God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Let us say together, I am a peacemaker. I am a peace. Wherever I am, peace prevails. Peace at my center and peace at the circumference of my conscious awareness. Peace at my center and peace at the circumference of my conscious awareness awareness. I was using it the other night when, when from over the Ronnie Williams Center or the police officers club, which is next door to me almost, at four in the morning, the music still hadn't subsided. And I just said, peace at my center. Peace. And peace at the circumference of my conscious awareness. And I don't remember when I fell asleep. But it just, I just drifted into this state of, of dreaminess and, and, and blissful repose. You know, friends, we are all familiar with the phrase, birds of a feather flock together. And this is nature's description of the law of vibration. It really means that we attract to ourselves people and circumstances that are vibrating with a range of frequency near our own. Which is why it's so important to come to church on a Sunday morning. Because then you are, you are gathering with people who maybe don't all have the same opinion, but who are vibrating at a frequency that is close to your own. And the birds of the feather together can make an, an amazing difference. Because we're working with like vibrations. So it is the leading edge of our vision of a world awakening to its spiritual magnificence. And we can't call it into being if we are constantly entertaining conversations about the opposite. The energy created by a group when it gathers, in the Aramaic language spoken by Jesus, is called pagra, P-A-G-R-A. Pagra means the energy of a group that contemplates and feels together or the specific energy felt or created by a group. Malcolm Gladwell, author of The Tipping Point, emphasizes how ideas, thoughts, and people can influence trends in society. Once there is enough of the, of the right mix of people sharing the same ideas, things start to change or tip on a large scale. I found a website called Collective Evolution with an article by author Andrew Martin titled, and listen to this, Spread the Word, Collective Consciousness Will Change the World. Spread the Word, Collective Consciousness Will Change the World. In it, Martin writes, and I quote, as consciousness shifts and disperses throughout communities, momentum takes hold, forcing a rapid change in the way things are done. It is interesting to note that it does not require a majority to influence or change the overall consciousness of large groups. There only needs to be enough key influencers that are respected in certain circles to influence and persuade others. Once the wheels are in motion and a change in consciousness gains traction, anything is possible. He continues, there are many people striving to put an end to hostility, wars, suffering, poverty, environmental concerns, and inequality. These people are paving the way for a collective shift for the good of all, and we in truth in the truth movement are helping to expedite the process. We are helping to expedite the process. Every time we meet here, 
and have this conversation about the truth of being. We're helping to expedite the process. Every time you attend Norma Nair's continuing conversations, note the name too, conversations that matter, you are helping to expedite this change, this shift in the national consciousness. So we need to make certain that we, uh, we attend these groups where we know we are going to speak the positive and we are going to be a part of something which is lifting the world up to the recognition of the glory and greatness of that which is in all, through all, over all, all in all, as all. It is God and it is good. But my friends, before we do anything in the external world, and I have some ideas for, for some things that we, we may wish to do, and you'll hear more about it in the coming weeks. I want to talk to Reverend Sheila McKeithen and to Reverend Maxine Martin at Unity about the three, of the, three, the three New Thought churches starting a men's group. I I've even have the name already. It's called Amen. Amazing men, amazing men energizing the nation. Yes. Yes. If you, if you like it, say amen. amen. No, not Sandra Cooper, not amen, no. Amen. <laughs> but yes, because friends, I think there are some stuff that we can be as, as the male of the species in this society and some things that we can do collectively in consciousness. And so I have my eyes on youth at risk. I have my eyes on returning deportees who, who get thrown back, find themselves in a country where they haven't been from, they were two years old. Um, so they have no roots here and are set adrift. So there'll be more talk, more talk about that. But guys, um, think about joining this, this great movement um, of the men of new thought and become a part of the amen that we want to hear from people's lips. And you, lips. And you, don't, talk, you don't talk about negatives and then say amen, do you? You talk about God, you talk about love, you talk about justice, you talk about truth, you talk about change, and then you say from your heart, amen. A few years ago, you know, I, I witnessed a dramatic change that can take place when a new conversation is initiated. And this is a true story. I had a woman in a workshop um, I was conducting, and she raised the issue about her 14-year-old daughter who was completely, in her view, unmanageable and out of control. So I said to this distraught mother, I can't imagine a 14-year-old being unmanageable and out of control. So, out of my control in my house. So I said, well, what is the problem? She said, she just bad. She said, she run with a gang of boys and them say, she bad. The police had scraped up and bring her home all hours of night, them say, she bad. The teachers at the school would kick her out, say, she bad. The neighbors say, she bad. Everybody say, she bad, she just bad, sir. I said, tell me something good about that picnic day. Tell me one thing good, silence. I said, no, you're her mama. Tell me something good about this child. And she said, well, she love animals. She said, every stray dog, and all the chicken them in the street, she said, you know, me did, me did turn some corn meal for the picnic them. And me find a girl at the door, I, I feed the chicken them with me turn corn meal. And the, the stray dog them in the street. She bad. <laughs> That's not bad to you. I said, not at all. That sounds like somebody who is finding love from creatures who don't judge her, who have not declared her to be bad. I said, you really want to see a change in her? And she said, oh, change? She had no change for change. I said, do you want to see a change? If not, we can stop the conversation. She said, yes. I said, this evening when you go home, I said, Find an opportunity to sit, to sit down with her and tell her, the police say you're bad. The gang of boys where you run with say you're bad. The teacher that expel you from the school say you're bad. The neighbors say you're bad. The whole world say you're bad, but look at picnic. And me bring you. Me push you out. I am your mother. And on this day, the 14th day of July, whatever the date was, 
I am declaring you to be good. Silence. Arms folded across chest. I said, you think you can do it? And there was silence in the group. And, and I said, you think you can do it? And the whole group said, yes, for her. She didn't answer me up to now. Well, next morning, I couldn't wait to hear what happened. You know what happened? It turned out that that very day was the child's 14th birthday. And her mother, passing through halfway tree on the way from work, bought a little stuffed dog for her and put it on our bed. And sat up the night waiting until she came home. And when she came home, she did what um, we had suggested. She said, everybody say you're bad, but I am your mother. And this day, which is your 14th birthday, I am declaring you to be good. Arms folded across the picnic chest. I mean, what is this? This is a new, she has never had this kind of experience or conversation before. So she was unresponsive. But she went into her room, and when she saw the little stuffed dog on her pillow, she let out a howl. And her mother said she cried straight till morning. And so she, mother says she balls, so in the class, the mother was balling. And when we look around, because I'm one of the chief mourners, as you know, um, I cry for everything. I was balling, and I didn't feel bad, because when I looked, there wasn't a dry eye in that class. And I don't know what transpired years down, but I know that the healing began with that conversation. Friends, we have to initiate a new conversation. It's as simple as that. Um, so Eric Butterworth, in his book, Discover the Power Within You, makes the point that an electric light doesn't have to go out into the room and try to sweep the darkness away. When the light is turned on, the light radiates and the darkness disappears. It's as simple as that. When you turn on the light of your consciousness, not all the darkness of the world can overpower you. And I believe with all my heart that that light is already turned on in beautiful Jamaica and indeed in the rest of the world. What we need now is to increase the wattage, to shine brighter. And we can do this by creating a new conversation that builds Jesus' seventh attitude of being into our consciousness so that we can take our place in our homes and workplaces and communities as beacons of light and as sons and daughters of Almighty God. I'd like to end with an, an insightful and creative poem by a daughter of God, a young bright eighth grader named um, Chani uh, Gorkin, who attended a, a, a Hasidic school in Brooklyn, New York, and it beautifully illustrates what happens when you create a new conversation. There's a copy of the poem. Um, uh, pre, I apologize for the, uh, the quality of the, the, the photocopying, but I've had it for a long time. Um, but the poem is titled, Worst Day Ever? And at first reading, paints a dark view of life but there's a surprise in it for you. Let me read it through once from the beginning. Worst Day Ever by Chani Gorkin. Today was the absolute worst day ever. And don't try to convince me that there is something good in every day, because when you take a closer look, this world is a pretty evil place. Even if some goodness does shine through once in a while, satisfaction and happiness don't last. It's not true that it's all in the mind and heart, because true happiness can be obtained only if one's surroundings are good. It's not true that good exists. I'm sure you can agree that the reality creates my attitude. It's all beyond my control. control. And you'll never in a million years hear me say that today was a good day. Now, I want you to help me change the conversation. Let us read it from the last line to the first, together. Today was a good day, and you'll never in a million years hear me say that it's all beyond my control. My attitude creates the reality, 
I'm sure you can agree that it's not true that good exists only if one's surroundings are good. True happiness can be obtained because it's all in the mind and heart. And it's not true that satisfaction and happiness don't last. Some goodness does shine through once in a while, even if the world is a pretty evil place. Because when you take a closer look, there's something good in every day. And don't try to convince me that today was the absolute worst day ever. A change of the conversation by an eighth grader who saw in her soul and her heart that all you need to do is take a different view. The master teacher said, turn the other cheek. And it, that means to look at things from a different perspective, friends. To take a different view of everything in your life. Everything that you think is wrong. Everything that you have been complaining about. Start a new conversation about it. Mm. My friends, this is our assignment, a new conversation, a new year, because you are a loving instrument of God's good, and that is the truth. Namaste.